welcome our ESPN audience back to Reynolds Coliseum, Raleigh, North Carolina. Hi, everybody. Brad Nestler and Len Elmore. This is when it really gets good, Lenny, in the ACC. We're down to the final few games. Well, for Duke particularly, they're 9-2 and two at the top of ACC territory, and they can pretty much put themselves out of reach as far as the championship's concerned. Let's take another look at our starting lineups. Robert Ricky, Christian Leitner, Ala Abdelnabi, Phil Henderson, Bobby Hurley, Brian Howard, and Rodney Monroe, along with Brian D'Amico, Chris Corciani, and Tom Gugliotta for North Carolina State. We're set to go. And we're underway at Reynolds Coliseum and Duke will control. Ricky out on the wing, back and healthy after the knee injury that kept him out of eight games. Bill Henderson will take the first shot. Scramble for the rebound. Who's going to get it? North Carolina State ball. And right away, Bill Henderson, the leading scorer for the Duke team, gets a little bit of penetration inside, takes the shot, but people start fumbling for it. A little bit of anxiety out here. Both teams look a little tight. Monroe can't get it. Leitner high for the rebound. Here comes Bobby Hurley. Abdelnabi got a hand out. Turnover Duke. And back comes North Carolina State. Those two will bang around all night. Porciani and Hurley. D'Amico from 17. Big shot from NC State right now. Brian D'Amico and Tom Gugliotta along the front line. They know they have to be more offensive minded because as good a player as Leitner and Abdel Nabi are for Duke, they're foul prone. Ricky on the drive on the baseline and air ball. Scrambled for his own rebound though, and Abdel Nabi ties it up. Ricky who missed the shot, scrapped for the rebound. Abdel Nabi evens us a two. Well, this place is rocking already, and we've only played a minute and 30 seconds. Gugliotta works, gets it out to D'Amico. D'Amico and Gugliotta both playing along the perimeter right now, trying to pull the Duke big people away from the basket. Tough shot by Brian Howard. Well, Brian Howard's being guarded by Robert Bricky. You take a look at Bricky. When we get a chance to see the big brace on his right knee, he's been playing well offensively, but you wonder if he's got the lateral movement to play defense. Nice entry pass into Leitner. Triple team put up a shot. No good. Orciani comes out of there with it. Gugliotta on the baseline. 6-2 State. Working on Porciani, the veteran, and a whistle and a foul on Porciani. Well, we talked about at the top of the show how Chris Porciani likes to gamble. More times than not, his gambles pay off. But when he lets Hurley turn the corner here, there's really nothing he can do. He tries to make the steal, but gets called for it. You'll see him do that periodically. But again, more times than not, he's going to come up with the steal. He's the steals leader in the ACC. Porciani over three steals a game. North Carolina State's jumped out, shooting three out of four. Duke only one out of four. By the way, I like the way you talked about Hurley and Porciani, and you didn't call them gym rats there in the beginning of the show. <laughs> but they are coaches' sons, <laughs> and both play for their dad. Bill Henderson doesn't get the jumper. Porciani's got on the rebound in the right place at the right time. He and Eco out top. Almost lost it. Brian Howard will work over Abdelnabi. Leitner pulls down the rebound, and he's fouled by Gugliotta trying to get position for the board. The state seems to want to play somewhat of an up-tempo game. Every time Duke gambles, they're going to take the ball to the basket if the gamble doesn't pay off. That time, Howard took it to the basket, but there was no one covering the board. Except for Duke plays. Porciani picks up Hurley at midcourt. Henderson and Monroe, two of the best two guards in the ACC. Bob underneath, Bob Donabi will put it in. Well, there's a reason why Ala Abdelnabi leads the ACC in field goal percentage. Great positioning inside. So Hurley with the assist, and he hits the 200 mark in assists. There's a turnover for North Carolina State as Leitner comes out of there with it. Henderson on the fly. 
Duke doing a nice job recognizing that State wants to run their offense through Gugliotta and D'Amico right now, bringing them out on the perimeter. But what's happening is neither one of them are the great passers that maybe Jim Galvano would want them to be. Whistle and a foul before Monroe's shot. Abunabi, I believe, inside. Mike Krzyzewski looking pretty satisfied so far with his team's defense. Even though the score is tied 6-6, six, six, they're doing a nice job forcing State down to go back to a guard-oriented offense. Rodney Monroe's jumper no good. Hurley pulls it out of there. Three on three. Ricky up. Didn't get it. Abunabi does. Took a lot of criticism his first couple of years at Duke. Some people said he didn't work hard enough. Others said he wasn't focused. This year he seems to put it all together. And he's got six of Duke's eight points. Howard on the drive in the lane with a left hand. Tough shot. Howard has four, and we're even at eight. And that's the matchup we should watch. Robert Bricky guarding Brian Howard again. Lateral quickness, maybe Bricky's problem. Henderson draws a three. 53rd three-pointer of the year for Phil Henderson. And Duke's got their biggest lead. Occiano in the drive, whistle and a foul on Hurley in route. I'm going to make a correction on an earlier foul. It was on Henderson earlier, not on Abdelmadi. Hurley picks up his first. 15-32 to go in the first half. Duke with an 11-8 lead. We'll be back in a moment after these words from our good friends at Natural Light. Hi, it's me. I'm in 2702. I'll be right up. Where there's good food and good times, it's only natural. Natural Light from Anheuser-Busch. We met in pre-dental and uh, opened our practice 15 years ago. Best buddies. Usually. Usually. <laughs> Things work out. It could be worse. I'll tell you one thing, there aren't many guys I could work with. Yeah, neither can I. See, right now, our primary concern is making sure the practice continues in case one of us, uh, you know, bites the dust. <laughs> bites the dust? Well, you know what I mean. Come on. Jefferson Pilot Insurance and Financial Services. Some people think only foreign companies build quality cars. Now, according to an independent survey, an American car company offers you a choice of some of the most trouble-free cars you can own. That American car company is Buick. And the 1990 versions of those American cars are Buick LeSabre, Buick Riviera, and Buick Electra Park Avenue. We believe there's a new symbol for quality on the great American road. Duke with their biggest lead, 11-8, 15-32 to go in the half. Well, a serious knee injury kept Robert Bricky out for over a month, and he's come back to do pretty well offensively, but defensively, as we see Brian Howard drive around him, you have to wonder whether or not he has that lateral quickness, particularly to his right. He's also a bit fatigued right now. Having missed a month, you got to get back in shape. Missed eight games after being injured against Virginia. State trying to cut the Duke lead to a point. Torciani at the point. Hurley on him close in the Duke man to man. Fagan's in the lineup now. He works on Leitner. Nice entry pass underneath. And he gets it to Kevin Thompson for the score. Well, those two guys pretty much as high school teammates and know how to play together very well. They give him State a big lift. And Fagan's forces a turnover on the other end. Good hustle. State right now shooting five out of eight from the floor. Duke at five out of nine. But with the addition of Fagans and Thompson in the game right now, Jim Galvano's going to take a risk and use all 20 fouls he's had for big people. Fagans tripped a bit, tried to get it to his old high school buddy again. This one, Lakers steals. Each team with two turnovers. Here comes Duke, and Abdelabi had it blocked. Henderson follows it. Henderson leading all scorers right now with seven. That's a four-point Duke lead. Another turnover. State. Ricky, foul on the way, and they're going to call it on Corciani, I believe. See, 
Valvano telling his team to get back defensively, particularly when Chris Corciani or Rodney Monroe penetrates. Bobby Hurley, again, who said he's a consummate point guard, he's got great savvy, gives a no-look pass in the Ala Abdelnabi. It's only a nice play by Brian Howard to save the first shot, then a good Duke foul. Great vision by Hurley, the freshman. Here's Ricky, the senior captain, averaging 13 points a game. Ricky, that's his first point. Thomas Hill has checked in. There he is, a freshman who's really been a spark plug off the bench along with Brian Davis. Ricky can't get the second one, and Rodney Monroe will pull down the rebound. Forciani gets it in low to Feggins. He's double teamed. You see Hill on. Uh... Feggins right there, and the Hill is a great defensive player, good leaper, even though he's got outside a couple inches, he still does a nice job in defending the post. Bocciani tried to get a pass in the paint, and Monroe picked up the loose ball, can't get the jumper. Somebody got a hand up there, no call, and back comes Duke. Lead pass for Henderson, can't handle it. Duke looking right now to run at every opportunity they can. As soon as the ball goes up, they're taking off. These are the guys that have to handle the ball and both recognize it. They're going to put a lot of body on each other and create some problems for each other. Marciani with a decent left jab there. Early in the round here. 13.45 to go in the half. Brian Howard runs it down, but it's over and back in a turnover on NC State. That's number four for Jim Galvano's Wolfpack. Galvano in his 10th year, as is Mike Krzyzewski. Boy, they had some wars over the years, including one four weeks ago that Duke won in overtime in Durham. It's the early turnover look. Mickey Hinnant checks into the lineup for North Carolina State. Six man. Well, Hinnant has come in maybe to offset the quickness along the Duke front line that uh, Brian Davis and Thomas Hill present. That was Krzyzewski, Mike Krzyzewski's plan, I believe. Anderson. If he gets warm, look out, he's got nine. A six-point Duke lead, their biggest. Borciani will take the outside jumper. Got his own rebound. Try it again. He's shooting only 40% from the field. Chris Borciani has made himself a threat, though, throughout this season. And it's really helped his team. He's got three rebounds tonight, too. Looking that last one, it gave him another chance. Outside jumper. Hurley gets a screen from Leitner, wanted to get it back to him, instead goes to Hill in the paint. Maybe Hill over the back here. That's the call. Hill trying to get his own rebound. What I was talking about with the insertion of Hill and Davis, Mike Krzyzewski wants to create more quickness along the front line. If this is going to be an up-tempo game, he's going to get his runners in. Jim Valvano countered, though, by bringing Mickey Hinnon in, leaving Brian Feggins in. And now it's a good matchup, quickness against quickness. A four-point Duke lead. Twelve and a half minutes to go, first half. Carolina State's all-time three-point shooter cuts it to a Duke lead of only one. Figures the world's first shot that goes in will be a three. Huh? Well, he's shooting much better from the three-point area, almost 47, 49 percent, as opposed to the two-point area, 50, 45, 46 percent. He gets a foul on the other end. His first. Abdulnabi and Bill McCaffrey check it in for Duke. Iamico comes back in, and Thompson will sit out. Gugliotta is also going to check in for North Carolina State. Well, with Abdul Nabi coming back in to replace Leitner, it's one of those things where you didn't hear much from Christian Leitner. NC State doing a nice job of doubling and tripling him to keep him from getting ball. He was pretty quiet Sunday, too, against Wake Forest. He had only four points. Hill way outside. Pin it all over him. And a whistle. Foul on him. Mickey Hinnett's a senior. Played his high school ball just up the road in Cary, North Carolina, and they love him. He's uh, the guy that comes in and really picks the tempo up considerably. 
We've got a timeout with 11 minutes and 58 seconds to go in the first half. And the Duke Blue Devils, the third-ranked team in the country, holding to a one-point lead over North Carolina State. There's only one import truck that's built so tough. It's guaranteed bumper to bumper. Long enough for a trip around the world. Twice. Mazda. Oh, ha! Mazda trucks. Guaranteed tough. Shut up. Pull all gens out your chair. Pizza Hut has a great new way to get your family together. An NCAA mini basketball. Uh -huh. Now you can get one for only $2.99 with every Pizza Hut pizza you buy. Yeah. The mini basketball is fun to play with. Mm -hmm. And Pizza Hut knows that the family that plays together uh -oh. is always showing off. The mini basketball is just $2.99, but hurry, supplies are limited. Pizza Hut, making it great. Summary. A look at first half action here at Reynolds Coliseum. In Raleigh, 11:58 to go first half. The Duke Blue Devils with a one-point lead on the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. A good one early. Brad Nessler and Len Elmore with you. Billy McCaffrey will trigger it for Duke. Abdul Nabi at six points early. He wants it back, and Hill got it to him. Position by Abdul Nami kept the Amico on his back and got a nice pass along the baseline. That's why he shoots so well. Nice drop step, doesn't waste motion. Three point, Duke Lee. Duke Lee out of way out on top. Is that Duke man to man? Thomas Hill all over me trying to get it to Corciani who tripped and Abdul Nami steals it away. Head to Henderson. Now Hill kicks it back out to McCaffrey. And Duke's going to start all over. Phil Henderson slows it down. Hill lost it. Scramble and jump ball. Possession arrow. And we go to North Carolina State. This is what I talk about by great position. Holding D'Amico off. Holding up his hand as a target to the baseline. The passer sees that. Sees he's uncontested on that side and hits him. D'Amico's going to have to do a better job against Abdel Nabi. Maybe get around in front of him. Make him lob over him. Because Abdel Nabi's been very effective thus far. Points off the turnovers. Duke with the edge there. 11 minutes to go in the half. 18-15. Duke in front. Porciani screams at the official, but Hurley's all over it. Here's Gugliotta on the baseline. He's got four, and it's 18-17, Duke. Made the shoulders fake. Got the shot block of Ricky off his feet. Hurley and Porciani's worth the price of admission by itself. Nice pass in low. Abdelnawi had it knocked away. It'll be Duke ball. And that's a better job. Amico got around in front just a little more. Forced the lob pass. Someone got a piece of it, though, for NC State. He also got a lot of help from Tom Gugliotta coming from the weak side. Ryan Howard checked back in. Rodney Monroe will get a breather. A steal on the inbound. Mickey Hinnett running up with Howard. And they're going to say last touch off Ricky's foot. Well, Jim Valvano just a little bit upset. Two on one break, and they still can't convert, even though they got possession. Those are the opportunities you can't afford to miss. Christian Leitner checking in. He's been held scoreless so far. 18 17. State with a chance to take the lead. They had an early lead of 6 2. Luciana comes back, looks at Coach B for instruction, and now he'll 
on the play for the Wolfpack. Marciani gives it up. Bobby Harley's going to make sure he doesn't get it back. Give and go. The Amigo back to Howard. Chance for a three-point play for Brian Howard. A little chess game going on once Mike Krzyzewski reinserts his two big people. Jim Galvano brings his big people out to run the offense and uses Brian Howard and some of the smaller guys for his offensive scheme. I don't know if it would have mattered that Ricky has the knee brace or not. That was an excellent play, but again, he was trailing Howard a little bit, as you mentioned earlier. And what opened up the middle right there was the fact that D'Amico and Gugliotta were brought out to have Abdelnavi and Leighton play them outside. That opens up the middle. Howard with seven and State back to a two-point lead. Hurley trying to go up for the jumper, and there's a steal by Corciani. Three on two, State. Corciani does it himself. In a normal situation, that's what you want Corciani to do is to shoot it rather than pass it. That equals the biggest lead for State. But at home, with this kind of crowd playing this kind of game, that's not a normal situation. McCaffrey silences the sellout crowd here at Reynolds with a jumper from the free throw line. That ends a 7-0 run for North Carolina State. 22-20, Wolfpack. In it, underneath, Diamico, nice pass, can he handle it? Got his own rebound after the miss. And it's stuffed by Lakeman. Now Howard! Howard's got nine. And we have nine minutes to go first half. Abdelnabi again got underneath. D'Amico looks at the bench after that, the coach, and say, what can I do? But Abdelnabi, again, if Leitner's going to be quiet, Abdelnabi's picking up the slate. Slack. Abdelnabi, five out of six from the field for his ten points. Ugliata with Leitner all over him. defense on both ends by these clubs. Mike Krzyzewski, of course, a Bob Knight disciple, and they teach a little man-to-man -man defense. Well, that's called stifling man-to-man. -man. <laughs> there is a difference. Some teams play man-to-man, -man, others play blanket. 24-22, home team with a two-point lead. Cuts him off nicely. Howard, he's been the machine so far. Had it blocked by Ricky that time. Hennett picks it up. He had it partially blocked by Leitner. And Hurley comes out of there with it. Duke to try to tie, but Hurley... I was going to say threw it away. He didn't. Last touch by NC State. Rodney Monroe will check back in. Number two scorer in the ACC. We've got eight minutes. Left in the first half, 24-22, North Carolina State in front. We'll be back after this word from our good friends at Budweiser. Budweiser presents What's Your Call? In Bud Bowl 2, Bud Light's Budway Joe completed a long pass to his tight end. This led to Budweiser's most embarrassing moment. What happened to Bud's free safety? Did he blow his cap, get knocked on his glass, or get faked out of his label? Much to his surprise, Budweiser's free safety was faked clean out of his label. If that was your call, this Bud's for you. If you're like me, you appreciate value. Whether it's in fine china or a luxury car, that's why you should explore the values available now at your Buick dealer. Regal is Buick's best-selling coupe. Century, the best-selling Buick sedan. Two ways to discover the value of Buick ranked among the most trouble-free American car companies. Lots of dealers promise value, but they're not selling Buicks. The great American belongs to Buick. Got it all, groceries. Lost all deals. But we're smiling, because now we're mobile. Got it all, groceries. Some stores got 12 locations. We got millions. You shopping, we stopping. Red light, green light don't matter, because we ain't got licenses. 
Some supermarkets go to impossible extremes to try to get you to shop with them. At Food Lion, we don't believe in gimmicks, just extra low prices every day. So remember, you don't have to go to extremes to lower your food bill. You just have to go to Food Lion. I got a cousin get you anything. Eiffel Tower, Leaning Tower, pizza. You want the pizza? I got pizza right here. North Carolina State with a two-point lead at the eight-minute mark remaining first half. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of Raycom and JP Sports is prohibited. Well, you're going to see some turnovers in this game because of the great defense we talked about. But right now, Land North Carolina State doing more with the turnovers. Well, they're certainly making Duke pay for it, particularly in a transition. And that's what that's what happens when you have a team that's very attuned to going from defense to offense like the State. Leitner over to Henderson. He can't get it. Monroe blocks out Leitner, and North Carolina State will have it. Christian Leitner, again, very quiet offensively. It's been a lot of Abdelnabi who's been five of six from the field goal area, and so is Phil Henderson, four of six. The rest of the Duke team is now one of five. I wonder at this stage of the season if Leitner's maybe a little bit tired. As I said, only four points against Wake Forest Sunday and nine rebounds, and he's averaging double figures in both categories in ACC play. He picks up that rebound. That's his third. We got to remember, though, he still is a sophomore. The lobby and a chance for a three-point play coming up. Ties things. D'Amico picks up his first foul. Again, Bobby Hurley recognizing the hot man. D'Amico late getting there. That's why prior to this replay, you saw the frustrated look on his face. He really doesn't know what he can do at this point. Abdelnabi is so aggressive offensively that uh, Brian D'Amico is just going to have to worry about him. Maybe not help out so much. Abdelnabi with 13 points as he completes the three-point play and puts Duke back in front, 25-24. Monroe with only three points on the three-pointer. Works for a jumper on the baseline. Leitner, another rebound. The Duke's historically done a great job of riding Monroe throughout his career. Nice job by Gugliotta to strip Henderson as he tried to go up with him. Pile up in the lane, ball loose. Henderson comes out with it. And only now are Howard and Hurley getting off the floor. On the other end, Leitner, his first pass. With everybody tangled up, State lost an opportunity to maybe pressure the ball while Duke waited for their players to get down court. In fact, they created some holes by standing around. Big pick by D'Amico, and <laughs> he's going to be called for the foul. Those are the kind of picks that big men love to set, particularly if they're legal. But Bobby Hurley, he'll remember this one. Same thing happened to him on Sunday. Ralph Kitley of Wake Forest set a pick at about midcourt and just flat leveled Hurley, and he had to go out of the game with a sore knee. And D'Amico picks up his second foul there. After that, after that pick, D'Amico had one of his Eddie Haskell smiles. <laughs> So Bobby Hurley, a 78% free throw shooter, scoreless so far at the line. Duke, the top free throw shooting team in the ACC, gets the roll. There's the group and how well they do. Leitner on top of the ACC. Corciani Moreau right there. Bobby Hurley not too far behind Dennis Scott at Georgia Tech. Duke's on a 9-0 run in the last two and a half minutes. Hurley with his first two points, and it's Duke by five. They led by one point at six, and North Carolina State came back to lead. So a seesaw battle going out here in Raleigh. Rodney Monroe way out in front of the Duke coaching staff. This is Feggins. Howard wheels on Ricky. The jumper short. Ricky got the rebound. Well, as long as Duke cuts down on its turnovers, that keeps NC State from scoring. Because NC State's offense really isn't working so well. Another turnover, though. This is where they score. Porciani. Porciani with six. Again, the points, as Len said, come off the turnover. Duke ranked third in the country on a four-game winning streak. NC State's lost two heartbreakers in a row. 
Laker in low. Nice entry pass by Henderson. And Laker now has four. Well, right now with the NC State big men now getting the message and starting to front the Duke big men, the guys guarding the passers have to put pressure on them. Otherwise, the easy lob. Monroe only one out of six right now, handling it with Henderson on it. Still having trouble from the floor. Here comes Duke with a chance to up their lead to seven. Curly, great pass to Kubek. Kubek's foul will have a chance for a three-point play. Now we talked about Bobby Hurley being methodical and systematic. Nothing fancy. What he did essentially is recognize his trailer coming down court. And instead of penetrating, he just backed out, giving the trailer a lot of room, and Kubek just went straight down the shoot. That's something you really can't teach. You have to have instinct for that. And Hurley sees the whole floor. So Kubek coming from half court and decided not to penetrate because that would crowd it up. Well, he's got four assists for the game, 203 for the season. And only the third ACC freshman ever to have more than 200 assists in a year. Chris Porciani, who's got the ball in his hands right now, is one of the other ones. And Duke with their biggest lead. They're on a 12-2 run right now. Monroe's got to get the roof for State to have a chance, and he's one out of nine. Here comes Henderson. One on one with Howard, and Howard stripped the ball as he went up. Nice play defensively by Brian Howard. Well, Phil Henderson doing a great job against Rodney Monroe on the other end, the offensive end. He's not going for his head fakes, staying with him, keeping his hands up, and Monroe's forced to shoot over. Henderson over Monroe. Porciani pulls down a rebound. Davis run up his back with a foul call. Monroe's going to keep trying until he gets it right. This time he passes off, though, and threw it away. Trying to get it to Kevin Thompson, and NC State with a turnover. And you always have to wonder if you're a guard. If I penetrate and dish it off, you big guys better have your hands ready, because the next time I'm shooting. You don't get too many passes from a guy that scores 22-23 a game, do you? No, you don't, and I'll tell you one thing. Thompson probably figured he was going to shoot it. That's why he wasn't ready anyway. That's right. There's what Duke's done over the course of almost the last five minutes. Steal by Howard. You see, after now he point up, he tried to tell Kubek to throw it higher. Beggins, double team. Beggins, jump ball. Davis forces a jump ball, and it'll be Duke ball on the possession area. disagree but you're not getting an argument from Jim Valvano it's enough time right here it's a good show of strength by Feggins but the hand may have been on the ball just enough time still Duke by eight with just over four minutes to go in the half you see the pressure that Corciani's putting on Hurley on the pass same thing with Brian Howard that's how you stop the line turnovers back to back by each team a lot for Leitner and Hurley threw that one off the backboard. So Duke's in double figures in the turnover column. Mike Krzyzewski says, let's talk about this, gentlemen. Brings him over with 3.47 to go in the half. Duke 34, NC State 26. This year, one airline will pass all the others. We'll have 70,000 more departures than Delta. We'll have 120,000 more departures than American. We'll have 400,000 more departures than United. In fact, this year, U.S. Air will have more departures than any other airline in the free world. So if we sound like an airline that's really taking off, you don't know how right you are. U.S. Air, America's most frequent flyer. Dear Jenny, you're so neat. I don't usually pour my heart out like this. I'm mesmerized. mesmerized. Your effervescent charm. My passion, my passion for you will never be quenched. I will always thirst for your companionship. Oh, Jenny, you must feel so special. I feel like a Pepsi. Hello, Mrs. Jennings. This is First Union. We'd like to ask you a few questions about service. 
We're tough on ourselves at First Union. Were you pleased with our service? You find our 24-hour banking machines reliable? I'm a branch manager. Did we greet you with a smile? How long did your transaction take? And I'm going to see to it that you get service that no other bank can equal. Did we have the information you needed? My job depends on it. First Union Service. We guarantee it. 34-26. Duke in front, 347 to go in the half. Well, Ala Abdelnabi's really been a force for Duke, primarily because he's been getting lob passes. If you're a defender and you're playing some people inside, you're fronting, you hope your teammates are putting some pressure on the passer. That time, State did a nice job of forcing the passer to throw the ball short. That's because the passer couldn't see where his teammate was because of the pressure. Two steals in the paint. And then Hurley tried to throw the same type of pass to Leitner and threw it off the backboard. So three straight turnovers against Duke. Here with 3.45 to go in the half. And really at this stage, because the NC State offense isn't really clicking, that's the only way they're staying in the game off Duke turnovers. Monroe out to Feggins for the jumper. Leitner the rebound, but a whistle and a foul. It's going to be on Howard underneath trying to get position against Leitner. Well, that's very illustrative of the NC State offense getting out of whack. You don't really want Ryan Feggins shooting from 15, 25 feet. It's hard to tell where he was on the floor at that time because he put it up so quickly. But he's the guy that should be under the boards helping the rebound. But no one else is scoring from outside, so he figures he'd take his turn at it. Well, they sure aren't. 41 percent, 11 out of 27 for State, whereas Duke with those lob passes underneath, field goal percentage to the tune of 61 percent. Is a top free throw shooter of the ACC. Should have never said it, I guess. Christian, I take it back. Rodney Monroe, Corciani on the bench right now, getting a breather. So Monroe's going to run things. Hurley will be on him. He's going to take it over here. He still can't get it to drop. Monroe's one out of ten. Ryan Davis walked with it on the other end. Carolina State has two points in about the last seven minutes. We need a basket badly, to say the least. There's Corciani, the NC State quarterback on the floor. And if State's going to get a basket, their go-to guy, Rodney Monroe, is going to have to catch fire a bit. As you mentioned, he's one of ten. Now he's got the added chore of handling the ball and running the offense. Ryan Howard, the guy right now that had it momentarily, is a top scorer for State so far with nine. Whistle and a foul on McCaffrey as Hinnett made a move on the baseline. Bill McCaffrey, a freshman, picks up his first foul. So Hinnett's going to go to the free throw line. Mickey Hinnett averaging about six and a half points a game. He played his high school ball in Cary, North Carolina. His coach there was Phil Spence, who was the sixth man on North Carolina State's 1974 team. And I remember Phil well. I know you do. <laughs> Had a few battles. Lane violation. We'll turn it back over to the Duke Blue Devils, who lead by seven. Their biggest lead is mid eight. You see, we're under the three minute mark in the first half. Trying to get on Bobby Hurley. They've been pretty quiet with Duke on this run. Well, Bobby maybe got away with it. Henderson doesn't get it. Howard keeps it alive. Gugliotta comes out. Four on one. Hinnett will just take it in. Put it home. That's it back to Duke by five. It gives the crowd something to cheer about. Just prior to that, they were standing here with their mouths again, wondering what's going on. Behind the baskets haven't sat down yet. Henderson for three. Didn't get it. Monroe comes out of there with it and hit can get it. It's another easy one. Oh, Mike Krzyzewski wants the timeout. Two times in succession. Guards take a shot. The rebound comes off and State goes down for an uncontested layup. Nobody gets back for Duke. Could it be that they're tired? That may be one of the reasons Mike Krzyzewski called this timeout. And they've done this with Chris Corciani on the bench, so that's going to help them somewhere down the line as well. The eight-point Duke lead's been cut down to just three with two minutes and a second to go first half. 
Well, this has been the story pretty much. Abdul Nabi trying to get good possession. He and Fagans are battling pretty hard. Fagan's doing a nice job of keeping him from getting the ball. That's how you have to battle a guy who wants to get good possession, good position underneath. Also, you have to rely on your teammate, again, guarding the passer, because the more pressure you put on the passer, the harder it is to get, get it to a guy, no matter what type of position he has. Fagan's took about three in the chops there from Abdel Nabi as they were working for position. 34-31 Duke. Well, you talk about a guy like Brian Fagan's a moment ago. You know, we kind of criticize him for taking a 15, 20 foot shot, but anytime you play defense like that, you're entitled to take a shot here and there. State with back to back turnovers forced an easy buckets up their fast break points to an 8 2 advantage. And we'll see if Duke can make the adjustment right now. Again, if Phil Henderson's going to shoot and Bobby Hurley's put further down below the free throw line, somebody's going to have to rotate and get back defensively because that's where State, again, is staying in this game. Only three points down. They could have been blown away, save for the Duke turnovers and those easy baskets that they've given up in the last couple of possessions. Mike Krzyzewski's Blue Devils haven't won here since 1986. So State's had a three-year home streak of wins the Reynolds Coliseum. Leitner double team. pressure by NC State. You can't talk about it enough. Guys handling the ball are being doubled. People are dropping below the line of ball to help out when there's penetration. Just seems as though Jim Valvano told his guy defense is going to win this. You're not shooting well, but your defense has to be constant. And Monroe still playing the point. Corciani on the bench. Here's Monroe. Takes the jump over Hurley. Boy, Rodney Monroe just cannot buy one. One of the problems with Rodney Monroe's game is that he doesn't penetrate enough off the dribble. He likes the jump shot. There's the lob to Abdel Nabi. Got loose again. Another chance for a three-point play. I believe the foul will be on Feggins. Or Howard. Maybe Howard. It is on Brian Howard, his second. And we talked about defensive consistency. I mentioned the last few possessions. NC State with more animated pressure. This time, Bobby Hurley pulls up beyond the three-point area. There was no pressure on him, and he saw Abdel Nabi underneath with good position. The pass was thrown from about 20 feet away, no 25 wonder, feet away. No wonder Abdel Nabi can shoot 61% from the floor. A lot of people could under there, right? Well, when he uses that big body and gets good position, then he has guys on his team who will get him the ball. Absolutely, you're going to shoot a great percentage. Oh, and this is the chance for a three-point play. Still, he has 15 points here in the first half, and it's Duke by five with just over a minute to go in the first half. Hinnett takes it down, puts up a stray shot. Leitner saves it. He's got seven rebounds, so he's not scoring, but he's doing some other things for Duke. Duke turnover on the other end. The Amico loses it back. Both teams in double figures and turnovers. Hurley with a little opening, tried to take it in for the layup and had it knocked away. When you said a little opening, you were right, but he's not afraid to exploit it. He's six feet if he's lucky, 150 pounds. So he tried to slither through there, lost the ball in route. Now he'll bring it in on the baseline. Ricky saved it. We've got 26 on the shot clock, 42 on the game clock. Duke will go to a little motion, use some clock here. Leading 36-31. It's the game clock down in the corner of your screen. Shot clock now at 10. Down to five on the shot clock. Hurley leaves it for Bricky. Five assists. For Bobby Hurley, and now State with a chance for the last shot of the half. Monroe wants to take it. But it'll be hit it instead. His three pointers no good. Abdelnabi's rebound. And Duke will take a seven point lead into the locker room. 38 31, Duke the leader at halftime. So the 
the Duke Blue Devils 20 and 0 at on the season when leading at halftime and they've got a nice cushion here Len 38 31. Well so far it's been their inside game. Not surprisingly a lot Abdel Nabi has been carrying it although Christian Leitner who is the second leading scorer in that team really hasn't touched the ball and had an opportunity to do anything. 38 31 the number three team in the country leading the Wolfpack. Of One of ten from field goal range. Chris Corciani with no assists, but it's a 13 Duke turnovers that are translated into 13 points. The only reason why NC State is in this game right now. Well, you know that Monroe won't end up one for 20. At least you don't expect it. You know Corciani is going to get some assists sometime. But Duke, when they lead at halftime, they are 20 and 0, and they have the halftime lead as we head in to the second stanza. Leitner misses, and Monroe pulls down the rebound. Duke right away tries to establish Christian Leitner. He didn't have a stellar first half. And NC State didn't need that. Jim Galvano just stomped on the floor over there as if to say, well, there goes our chance to start things off on the right foot. Abu Dhabi, 15 in the first half, had that one partially blocked. Leitner can't get it for the second time, and Monroe another rebound. And Leitner turns around and looks at the official as though he wanted a foul. We said Rodney Monroe has got to get involved. He's got the first basket of the second half. And that cost Duke in getting all five of their guys back defensively. Ricky, but he clears out. He works on Howard on the baseline. They're going to call him for the charge. Good call by the official, Dick Paparo. I'm going to take a look at Rodney Monroe driving to the basket. You see three Duke players inside the lane with a force coming down. Leitner gets back late simply because he was still looking for a call. Mike successfully had to force him to get back down court. It shows you a bit of his frustration on offense. And he gets run over by Phil Henderson. Henderson will help him up. Phil Henderson picks up his second foul. It's a good look at Rodney Monroe who says he will be back for his senior season. There's a little bit of speculation that maybe he would go to the NBA. Prolific scorer, but he says, I'm not ready. I got to get bigger. There's things I have to work on. He made the announcement this week to uh, the newspapers and said, Don't worry, I'll be back. He and Corciani will both be seniors. They're going to call a lean in on Corciani. Very similar to the call made down on the other end of Robert Ricky. The defensive players stood their ground, grounded their entitled to, and it was the offensive player who infringed upon their ground. Watch Chris as he penetrates. Now he steps in to make contact there. But Bobby Hurley was entitled to that spot, going straight up and straight down. It's an old point guard trick to kind of slow down and let somebody run you over. But that time, he just backed into the man and thus picks up the foul. He's still not happy with it. You can see Corgiani, the fiery competitor out of Miami. Well, he's got to get a hold of his emotions right now and get his focus on the game. Forget about that call. There's a lot of time left. And he's sorely needed. He hasn't really contributed much to his team's offense, and they've been struggling. Leitner, one on one with Gugliotta. Kicks it out to Hurley for three. Got it. And that's the man Corciani's guarding. You know, you lose concentration, and the whole world caves in on you if you're not careful. Monroe, and it blocked by Leitner. Characteristically, Rodney's starting to force it now. He's taking it into the paint, and he's got two guys on him. He's still trying for the shot. Takes that one over Henderson. A little bit short. Abelabi clears it off. Here comes Hurley. Lead pass to Henderson. He handles it, but he can't get it too far under the basket. Right, right now, State has got to be able to slow it down and run something. So Rodney <laughs> well, they had to score, put it right. that way. But you know, this game at the time it was only a um, eight-point difference. The state's got to establish some type of pattern offensively. 41-35. Henderson threw one up as he was double teamed, and three Wolfpack players run into each other. Back comes Monroe. He has it stolen by Bricky from behind. So you talked about Rodney Monroe saying the state's got to work on something. The main thing is his ball hand, and he recognizes that. Ricky goes up against Howard. Jump ball, possession arrow. We'll go to Duke. Well, the play's getting a little bit sloppy right now. One of the reasons 
could be the fact that key players on both ends are getting a bit frustrated. They think that they should be dominating or at least getting the job done. When they're not, it seems as though they're playing outside of themselves. Chris Forciani, Rodney Monroe on one end, Robert Ricky, Bobby Hurley, Christian Leitner on the other. Possession error, obviously, NC State. Rubriano. He's got six, and all of a sudden, he stakes back to within four. A guy like Tom Gugliotta, in character, who's played somewhat of a minor role, helping out role, is the one who might be able to get the job done for NC State. Henderson can't get it outside. The last touch by Duke. Wolfpack will take over with a chance now to cut it down to a two-point ball game. Right now, Mike Krzyzewski with uh, McCaffrey, Davis, and Hill coming in to replace Abdel Nabi, Leitner, and Bricky. He's going to try to get out here now. One, let those guys sit on the bench and gain some perspective. But on the other hand, they're going to come out here and really pressure the players out here for NC State. Nicky Hennett also in. Here's Monroe for three. That would have been a gigantic bucket for State. Could have cut it down to one. Might have a change call coming up. Wait a minute. Jerry Donahue and Dick Caparo have a little conference, and they do change the call. Mike Krzyzewski says, you've got to be kidding me. This never happens at Cameron Indoor Stadium. <laughs> well, right here, the ball goes off. We see the battle inside. Nice that touch by Hill, I guess. The official underneath made one call, but Dick Caparo may have had a better perspective. At least that's what counts right now. So State with another chance. Brian Howard. Ugliata forces one again. Not a bad shot if you make it. He's got eight, and it's 41-39, Duke. 6-0 run for NC State. Duke with a small team right now, kind of has a floor spread in a passing game type of offense. Whistle and a foul. It's going to be on Mickey Hinnett. Picks up his second. Jim Valvano's Wolfpack has fought back in it. 41-39, Duke leads. Back after this from our good friends at Budweiser. Budweiser presents What's Your Call? The freezer wasn't just the hero of Bud Bowl 1. He was the biggest thing since 12 packs. But for Bud Bowl 2, Bud Light made a trip to the appliance store too, picking up some big players of their own. Can you name this trio of trouble? Bud Light signed the washer, the dryer, and the kitchen sink to long-term contracts. If that was your call, this Bud's for you. Three, two, one. Holly Farms was a chicken. Lick it and split. Already cooked, so you can lick it and split. Lunch it, munch it, dinner's a hit. Holly Farms was a chicken. Lick it and split. Juicy and quick is what you got. Holly Farms was the chicken. Look at this split. Yeah. A lot of airlines would like to be U.S. Air. And considering all the people we serve, all the places we go, all the times we go there, it would take a lot of airlines to be U.S. Air. U.S. Air, America's most frequent flyer. Remember, fans, to pick up your ballot and vote for the best player in the ACC in the Pepsi Diet Pepsi ACC sweepstakes and take a chance to win a 1990 Pontiac or tickets to the ACC tournament. Well, the fans are loving the comeback. The Duke players have calmed a bit, and Duke with a two-point lead, 41-39, shooting... North Carolina State, obviously this half has controlled things. Well, a lot of it has to do with the emergence of Tom Gugliotta as an offensive threat. On the other hand, 16% from the field, a couple of guys like Robert Bricky and Christian Leighton have really had trouble offensively in his shoulder. Henderson doesn't get the three, but he's fouled on the follow-through by Gugliotta. Gugliotta picks up his second. With Len Elmore, I'm Brad Nessler. 15.42 to go in this one. Duke by two, 41-39. 
Bill Henderson will go to the line. He had 25 four weeks ago when these two teams got together. Had nine in the first half. This is his first trip to the free throw line. He's at 19 of his last 20. He's the hottest free throw shooter on the Duke team right now. So he's in double figures. Diamico checks in and Gugliotta will sit out. Bill Henderson, who was reprimanded by ACC Commissioner Gene Corrigan this week for some comments he made about the officiating of the game at Virginia a couple of weeks ago. Gets both free throws. And if he hadn't been breathing through his mouth on that free throw, I think he would have had a tape shut. 43-39. Duke lead. Nice move on the baseline by Hennett. Locking foul on Thomas Hill. Well, NC State trying to utilize a little quickness of their own. Hill comes way over from the weak side, a couple of steps too late. But Duke really has a small team out there. They really have to focus on fundamentals and blocking out and coming over from the weak side to help out, particularly on some of the big people like D'Amico and Howard, who surely are going to start posting up if Duke keeps the same lineup in. If he hit it right about on his average now, he will be there if he hits this free throw. Average only five and a half points a game the first 19 games of the season. And since then, he's been a double-figure performer. We just had a chance to see Christian Leighton and Allah Abdelnabi sitting on the bench getting some needed rest, knowing that down the stretch, they will have to be effective and have to be fresh. No good by McCaffrey. Got his own rebound. Davis on the baseline. Well, this is a prime example of the times when quickness is much better than size. This basketball game is a game of quickness right now. It's not being played above the rim. And the smaller, quicker Duke players are getting to the ball a step faster. You see McCaffrey come up with the rebound. Davis with a step beyond some of the slower but bigger uh, NC State players. So that's where the balance comes from. It's quickness against size. NC State, on the other hand, is going to have to utilize some of that size. They haven't been able to do so yet. Mickey Hennett, Jim Valvano. A little teaching going on there as Hennett picked up his third foul. Mickey in his final season here after a two-year stay coming out of junior college. Ryan Davis with both free throws, his first two points of the game. And if I had to guess, Jim Valvano may be telling Mickey, don't look so much for your shot that quickly when you got the size in, like Brian or um, Brian Howard or Brian D'Amico. Let's use them and score them first. Having trouble just getting rid of the ball now. Corciani takes a jump. Not quite sure how he got that off, but he got it in. He's got eight. Well, you notice he's been shooting more and passing less because Duke's been stealing off his outlets and shooting 40% from the field. You know, Mike Krzyzewski is going to take his chances with Corciani shooting the ball. Corciani still without an assist, I believe. Yes, he is. That's no assist to for Corciani so far. Hill follows the miss by Henderson. Once again, getting to the board quickly. No fundamental block out by D'Amico. Monroe. Monroe with nine. And six this half. You know, maybe at the end of the game, when all the statistics are in, you might be able to appreciate a Rodney Monroe who just keeps shooting. Last touch by Duke. State will have a chance to tie if they can score this trip down. Robert Bricky and the injured knee suffered against Virginia. Missed eight games and came back against Notre Dame and was way up in the air and has been ever since. But as Len said, lateral movement on his defense, I think, is still kind of a sore spot. State can tie if they score. Brian Howard receives the ball, but he probably would like to receive it lower on the block. Hit it. Ties it up for the first time since it was 24 apiece. Well, Duke is cognizant of the fact that State wants to get it inside, but that's allowing the perimeter players to get to where they want, just like Hinnick did there. Thomas Hill way outside. Got it. That's a two-pointer. Well, they mentioned Thomas Hill comes off the bench not only to give players a rest, but to have big impact. And so far in this first, in the second half, he really has had some impact getting to the offensive boards and shooting from outside. Rodney Monroe on Phil Henderson. Way up in the air. Adjusted his shot. And D'Amico tipped it in. Tied at 49. And that 
could be the start of what State has been waiting for. Mike Krzyzewski anticipating that. That's Abdelnabi, Bricky, and Leighton are ready to come back in. Early misses. Ahead to hit it. He's fouled by McCaffrey. Leitner, Abdulnabi, and Bricky set to check back in for Duke. Gugliata and Fagans for NC State. Here come all of those players. McCaffrey comes out. Davis comes out. And Hill will come out for Duke. And Monroe and Howard get a breather for North Carolina State. And Mickey Hennett's going to the free throw line for Jim Valvano. Well, Mike Krzyzewski had gone as long as he thought he could with a smaller lineup who did a fine job keeping this game fairly even. And now he's got his big people in pretty much rested, ready to go. And you can expect Duke once again to start going inside to the power game. Brian D'Amico's got the equipment adjusted. The last North Carolina State lead was with 8.54 to go in the first half. They've got it now. Fifty forty-nine, NC State. With 11, state by two. Crowd is back into it at Wells Coliseum, to say the least. Ball on Gugliotti in the lane, working defensively against Abdelnabi, or was it Leitner? It's Gugliotti, Abdelnabi, same cross the lane, getting position. Good offensive players give you that first bump, but Gugliotta kind of gives him a bear hug to try to hold him. That's where he's called. Henderson for three. Rattled out on it. Abdelnabi walked with it. And Mike Krzyzewski just jumped off the bench, leaped off the bench right in front of his eyes. He wasn't very happy with that call, but Abdelnabi seemed to have taken a skip step before he put it on the floor. Mike's face kind of a North Carolina State color of red there. Here comes Hennett. out is going to slow it down. State's biggest lead was four points. And that was when it was six to two in the early moments of the ballgame. Well, if the stars are frustrated, like Rodney Monroe, Chris Garciani, it's up to the role players to come to the fore. And so far, it's been Mickey Hennett and Tom Gugliotta. Abdelnabi backs in one hand hook, stuck by Figgins. Two on one, State. Mickey Hennett has the last eight Wolfpack points. State with their biggest lead of the ballgame, 55 49, with 11.54 to go. Don't go away, we'll be back in a moment. Infinity Q45 sedan doesn't compromise performance for comfort or a luxury feel for raw power. If you've got some time, come over and test drive one. Hi, I'm Joe Montana, and I'm going to do something a little crazy. I'm going to challenge all those linebackers singing for Diet Coke, the tennis players, the game show hosts, the singers, any celebrity who's ever done a Diet Coke commercial to come on TV with me right here and take a blind taste test to prove once and for all which tastes better, Diet Coke or new Diet Pepsi. So come on, Miss Wimbledon, I'm serving. Come on, guys, take your best shot. But remember, this is the taste that beats Diet Coke. Luxury sedan from Infinity. 
Stay tuned for the Holly Farms Players of the Game Award. Brought to you by Holly Farms, a proud sponsor of ACC basketball for 14 consecutive years. 55-49, North Carolina State with their biggest lead of the ball game. The beauty of the team game. When your stars aren't really clicking, you got to dig down and find somebody to step up to the line. State's been able to do that without Rodney Monroe and really Chris Scorciotti. But Brian Fagan's with the block. Mickey Hennon has come down and scored some big baskets, and that's given State a six-point lead after trailing for most of this game. Brad Nessler and Len Elmore with you at Reynolds Coliseum in Raleigh, where Duke has shot only 21% this half to North Carolina State 71. Abdullabi will improve that just a little bit. That's his first basket of the half. He's got 17 for the game. Again, great position. Good lob pass. NC State, though, is getting over maybe a little quicker. Turnover. Ricky with a steal, and he missed the layup. Maybe with a stronger knee, that would have been a dunk. Marciani, Bobby Hurley on him in the Duke man to man. Here's Gugliano all along. Hill way up there for the rebound. Pass ahead to Bricky. Comes down, lost it. They're going to call a foul on Gugliano. <laughs> Chris Cocciani retrieved the ball and threw probably the hardest bounce pass he's thrown all game to the referee Dick Paparo had to tell him to cool it a bit. But that showed the emotion of this game right now. Not only the frustration of not being able to do what he wants to do, but just the fact that his team is coming back and he's so fired up. Gugliotta sits down with his fourth personal foul, and Brian Howard checks back in for the Wolfpack. At the line is Robert Bricky. Bricky, two out of three from the line. Four points on the night. Number 20 on Duke's all-time scoring list. He's got 1,189 points right now. Interesting NC State lineup right now. Mickey Hennett must be the hot hand. He'll be the go-to guy. But Rodney Monroe on the bench and so is Gugliotta, two guys who usually score. Duke with two extra chances on a rebound by Leitner and then a miss, and Hill tried to tip it, and they still couldn't get it. So State with a three-point lead, 55-52. Forciani leans in, got it out. Fagan's jumper is good. But Brian Fagan steps in to make it a trio of guys who've done the job despite the weaknesses that uh, Rodney Monroe and Chris Forciani displayed tonight. Hurley got Corciani up, try to turn around and leave a pass for somebody. Nobody home but Hill. Foul on Leitner. Leitner's having a tough night. But Christian Leitner trying to get the same position that Abdel Nabi gets, but he uses the lower part of his right arm, which is a no-no, and was detected by the official. He's not happy with it, but he's got to go and talk to his fellow teammate, Abdel Nabi, to figure out how you get that good position without fouling. Christian's got nine rebounds, but only four points. Porciani adjusted a shot over Leitner. And Duke Edsel almost ended up out there playing the trumpet in the band, <laughs> one of our officials. Duke will have it. 57-52, NC State by five, halfway point of the second half. Under 10 minutes now to go. Brian Diamico says that Abdul Nabi hooked him, but he's going to be the one called for the foul, his third. Well, they're both right. Diamico gives the bump initially as the ball goes in with the arm. Now he hooks. But the first one was called correctly by the official. Exactly right. And Jerry Donahue was right on top of it. Diamico with his third foul, and Ala Abdelabi will go to the free throw line. Phil Henderson's going to check back in for Duke. And Robert Bricky gets a breather. Ala Abdelabi. He says Ala, just like Ala Cart. He's been to Cart tonight. He's got 17. Missed the free throw.
Ryan Howard hasn't been an offensive factor since early in the game. Hill saved it. Monroe picks up the loose ball and got it. Biggest lead of the game for State. They're up by seven. Duke certainly has to come back down and reestablish their inside presence, particularly without Donavi. Leitner outside. Christian Leitner's first basket of the half. And that's such a great luxury for a big guy. If you can't get it inside, you got an outside shot, you can go with it. What a drive by Cortiano. Oh, they're going to call him for a walk. Oh, he certainly hopped on a bicycle that time. He's upset. But if he had an opportunity to look at it again, he would recognize that the official made the right call. And we got a timeout. Jim Belvano stands up and takes one with nine minutes and 11 seconds to go. And a frustrated Chris Corgiani who kicks a few chairs on the other side as he missed the layup, called for the walk, and then that red trash fellow gets it. Hello. 59-54 North Carolina State. Back after this word from our good friends at Budweiser. You find it in promises, and you find it in plans, in the midst of laughter, and in silences shared. When the deal is sealed, and when the dance is done, it's there. And for 80 million responsible Americans, it's simply a good part the good life. It's beer. A message from Budweiser. Until recently, my job was a nice job. I made sure everyone in our company understood our insurance benefits package, especially me. But then they started to make all these new rules and regulations. Do you know what Cobra is? Let me tell you, it's not a reptile. And Section 89? No. I still haven't found anyone to explain that one. Oh, and then there's this thing called Tefra. It's funny. I used to think that was a shampoo. <laughs> Jefferson Pilot Insurance and Financial Services. The first Union communication satellite saves only one second on every banking transaction, but it adds up to 120 man hours a day. So First Union can give you millions of dollars in extra service at no extra cost. First Union is a leader in space because we want our service to be the best on Earth. First Union service, we guarantee it. Chris Corciani has been a frustrated guard tonight. He's got eight points, but a few times things don't go his way and that Italian temper just flares in a hurry. Here's a lob to Leitner. Double team, didn't get it through it. Feggins comes out of there with it. Pass was too deep, and Leighton didn't recognize where he was. He got it blocked by the bottom of the backboard. Rodney Monroe had a thought from way out three-point land. Instead, goes into Feggins. Great hook pass. Diamico's all alone. Hey, NC State's bench is really giving them a lift. Not only has Brian Feggins done a lot of things, but you had people come off doing the things necessary to help their team win. Again, a seven-point state lead. Abelabi had it blocked, but he was fouled also by Feggins. And Brad, we talked about the bench of Mickey Hennett, Brian Feggins, Kevin Thompson. They're outscoring the Duke bench 19-11. Abdelnabi, what's happening right now is NC State is forcing the guys a little deeper. We talked about the bench. We're taking a look down at the Wolfpack bench, and they got to be pretty happy with their contribution. But what State's doing right now to the big people for Duke is forcing them even lower. So when the lob pass is thrown, many times they're behind the basket or too close. Leitner had his block by the bottom of the backboard. Abdelnabi was pretty far under, but he was fouled. Abdelnabi converts both free throws. He has 19 points. And he gets Duke back to within five. Beggins is going to take it in on Laker, but he lost the handle. Laker will come out of there with it. Bobby Hurley to Christian Laker. Partially blocked by Howard. Got it back. Still can't buy it. Now Bonavi follows. 21 for Bonavi. Monroe.
With eight minutes to play, it is 61-58, North Carolina State by three. You know, Rodney Monroe, you take a look at his face. We talked about frustrations. Some people show it. Chris Corciani shows it one way. You see Christian Leitner and Bobby Hurley show it in others. But Rodney Monroe seems to still have that same affable look on his face. It's almost as though he knows that when it comes to crunch time, he's still going to be able to do the job. And he's trying to exert his presence right now. Here he is with 11 points to go with his eight rebounds and four assists. Now he's got a dozen. Nine of those this half. He had one three-point shot in the first half, and that's all they could get to go for him. Even the free throws are a struggle tonight. Four-point NC State lead. 62-58 under the eight-minute mark. They're going to ride out the lobby till he drops. Doesn't get the shot, but D'Amico fouled him. That's four on D'Amico. That's what you have to do when things aren't clicking. The few bright spots you have, you got to go out there and you got to milk them for everything. You have to make D'Amico show that he can guard at Allah Abdelnabi. Oh, something we haven't seen tonight. We played well over half of the second half. Nobody's played zone at all all night, have we? Well, NC State normally known for their trick or as some people call them jump defenses. They match up pretty well with Duke as, they, as they've shown. Duke on the other hand is hardly ever known to play uh, anything but man-to-man. -man. And their man-to-man -man is so tough. It might as well be a zone man, whatever you want to do it, because they're right in your face, no matter who has the ball, no matter where you are. abdullabi has got 23 points. That's one short of his career high, which came against NC State here last year. State right now with a pretty small lineup with Giamico out. They've got a lot of guys who are perimeter players inside. Monroe wheels around Hurley. He had that look on his face. He's got 14, and again, it's a four-point Wolfpack lead. Anderson with the throw on him. Now he's double-teamed. That leads early open momentarily. Ala Abdelabi with a career-high 25 points. Good no call by Dick Papar. He told Mickey Hannon to get up. That was somewhat of a flop that time. Ubliata tries to answer on the other end. Whistle and a foul on. Let's see. Is it going to be on Phil Henderson? Yes. Now is on Henderson, number three, his third. That is big foul. There's Ala Abdelnabi for his 25th point, a new career high, topping the previous mark he set against North Carolina State last year. As I mentioned, in the three years I've watched him, he's gone to the basket more aggressively today than I've ever seen him. Plus, he's so focused. He knows he's getting on the blocks. And when you know you're going to get the ball, if you get good position, that's the greatest incentive in the world. Former Mr. Basketball in the state of New Jersey, born in Egypt. Well, Abdul Nabi having a big night. Brian Howard, who had a big first half. In fact, a big first five or six minutes. But that's his first point here in the second half. Dick Picaro giving Mickey Hennett somewhat of a warning. He and Abdel Nabi kind of mixed up elbows and arms. And then Chris Corciana came over to tell him, hey, listen, we win this game, I buy the pasta. Or he's telling him, hey, that guy's seven feet, 255. <laughs> <laughs> Howard got a ball. Howard with 11. NC State by four, under seven minutes to go. Duke now spreads it out a bit. Underneath. Abdel Nabi had it stripped away by Corciani. He's going to get credit for that steal. And here comes Olympia. Gugliotta pulls up. Ryan Davis comes out with a rebound. Great pass to Bricky. Credit Ryan Davis with everything but the two points. Eight by two. Gugliotta for three. Duke will have a chance to tie it. Well, defensively, again, when the shots aren't falling, you've got to play it consistently. Duke did it the last couple times down. 
Michael Nobby with 27, our seventh tie of the game. And when your defense plays consistently and your shooting comes around, it pays dividends just like there. We've got a timeout. Dead even at 66. Five minutes and 41 seconds to go here at Reynolds Coliseum. Distractions and unexpected turns. A car should be like a friend. You don't have to talk to. The Mazda 626 is engineered to feel just that way. With the ability to make you feel in control. At the same time, it makes you feel relaxed. The 626 from Mazda. Get $1,000 cash back on a 1990 Mazda 626 now. If you need to bracket a shelf, Tighten a bolt, deadbolt your door, then it's time for a quick trip to Lowe's. Because Lowe's has everything you need to fix anything you have that has anything to do with your home, period. So why don't you fix it? For whatever you need to maintain your home. We have it all at Lowe's. Just fix it. These ACC games always remind me of Food Line. Oh, I know, and don't you just love their stores? And their extra low prices. And that actor that talks about Food Line on TV? He's not an actor. He's really the president the of Food president. Line. Sure. His name is Tom. I can't think of his last name. Oh, he it's always Tom. talks about how Food Line saves customers money. What is his And how name? Food Line has Tom. lowered everyone's grocery bill. Oh, I know. It's just on the tip of my tongue. It's Tom Smith. Let's take you back six years. We said this is a heated rivalry. This game's tied at 66. That one was tied at 68. Closing moments. Johnny Dawkins going to kick it back out to Danny Mahar. And Mahar will take the jumper for what appears to be the Duke win. But wait a minute. The official says it didn't go in in time. Mike Krzyzewski tends to disagree. I think he's saying no way there. But subsequently, Danny Mahar did go to the free throw line. Hit a couple of big ones. There he is, and Duke had an overtime win. Back to the live action here in Raleigh. Brad Nessler and Len Elmore with you, and we've got another one of those beauties brewing right here with 5.41 to go. Oh, the score tied, and five minutes and 41 seconds left to basketball. That's how long this game is for them. Start from scratch. Both teams now want to establish their strengths. Rodney Monroe had that look on his face like he's ready to take off. Here he is. Gugliotta tried to keep it alive, but it came down in the hands of Phil Henderson, who takes it all the way himself. And the follow. They're going to call it on Bricky. Is the basket good? I don't think so. Nope, wave it off. Well, on the other end, Duke wanting to run. You get a nice shot from Henderson, who slices down the lane, but Robert Bricky climbs on a few backs in order to uh, try and put that ball in. But what Duke wants to do is they want to run when they have the opportunity because they know that if they have to pull back in a half court set, they've got some strengths inside. Abdel Nabi's on the bench getting a breather. He's been the man so far. But Christian Leitner's out on the floor. He's the guy they'd like to get started. Abdel Nabi sits down with 27 points. I thought it was Rodney Monroe who got run over on the other end. Howard was in the free. No, they do switch it up. Monroe's the guy that got run over by Robert Bricky. <laughs> Good call. Monroe with a big half. 12 points this half, 15 for the game. Abu Nabi back in. And Rodney Monroe has just passed Tom Burleson on the all time NC State scoring list. He's number seven now. Rodney Monroe. Junior out of Hagerstown, Maryland. Abdenabi just checked in, and with he and Leighton up front with Ricky, you got Thomas Hill, who's not really a great ball handler, playing shooting guard, and all he's going to be doing is passing the ball inside. Well, coming off the wing. If there's such a thing as a good foul in Lat Low, I guess it was that one on Howard because Abdenabi was all alone, and Howard comes over to help. Well, this is the power game right here. Hit the wing to get that 45 degree angle where the defender can't play either side and then try to lob over the defender if he fronts. Force the weak side to come and help. 
Brian Howard did a nice job when he's called for the foul. Now Abdelnabi will have to earn it from the line now, and he doesn't get it. So it was a good foul because Abdelnabi can do no better than one here. He's got eight rebounds and 27 points. And at this late in the game, Abdelnabi is a 61% free throw shooter. He's going to have to take the chances in there. I'm sorry, 77% free throw shooter. He won't take the chances. A little bit. 61 percent field goal. That's right. Got 28, a big night for Abenami. Got a foul on the other end on Thomas Hill. Gugliotta with some instruction from Coach V. Five, uh, make it 4:55 to go, and NC State with only a one-point lead. Guy you'd like to have at the free throw line is there. 81% free throw shooter. Three out of four from the strike tonight. He's having to work to get him to go, but how quiet could he be in one half and how he has come out now to have 17 points. If he stays on about a 21 point average the remainder of this year and all through next year, he'll pass David Thompson on the all time career list score wise for NC State. Of course, Thompson did it for three years. Though. <laughs> I was just going to say, put it in perspective. I saw a lot of this. I know. <laughs> Coming First down at you. 70 <laughs> 67. Hurley lost sight of the ball for a moment. Leitner runs it down. And it'll call over and back on Duke. But he really couldn't hear the whistle. And it made you think that maybe Chris Corciani touched it and then Leitner regained it. We'll take a look at it here off Hurley's hands. And it's Leitner's hand that gets there first. He didn't hear the whistle over Dick Ricard right on top of it. Good call. Four and a half to go. 70-67 North Carolina State trying to upset number three Duke. Four minutes is a lot of time for these two teams though. Beggins is left alone. See Rodney Monroe posting down low against Thomas Hill. That's interesting. Orciani takes a swing at Hurley as if to say, get off my back. You know, I tell you, the execution by NC State in their half court offense, nobody's picking for anyone. A lot of movement, but no picks. Consequently, you can't get anybody open, and Chris Corciani's forced to take a bad shot. That he missed. And now Duke can cut it to one. Leitner. Kicks it out to Hill. He's got to go way out on the corner to save it. Hurley to try to tie it. Loose ball, possession. Duke. Well, they're going after it on the floor. Well, the big mistake Christian Leitner made was putting that ball on the floor to gain his balance, rhythm, and composure. You know, big guys always make that mistake. I know I did for a long period of time. It's one of those things you have to break, particularly when you're that size, because now you make yourself the size of those little guards who can't tie you up. And it was Monroe who got down there below Leitner to tie him up. Still Duke ball, though. Henderson. A whistle. Battle for the rebound. Who's the foul on? Abdelnabi or Feggins? They call it on Feggins. That's the third on Bryant Feggins. Again, this is the time of the game where fundamentals mean a lot. The team that masters the fundamentals in close game situations usually are the ones who come out on top. And we're talking about being able to block people off the boards and gain the defensive rebounds, limiting a team to one shot. We're talking about good fundamental defense, not letting people turn the corner and penetrate. All those things are very important. We'll see who can master those because that will probably be the winner. And you don't want to put the Blue Devils on the line. They're the seventh best free throw shooting team in the country. And Abdelnabi shows why. It's a one point North Carolina State lead. Abdelnabi has 30 points on the night. Rodney Monroe, who's had the big half for North Carolina State. And now we do see a little bit of the Duke zone for the first time, or is it not? Is it just because of the spread here? Well, they seem to be playing a 2-3. They're matching up 
facing anybody who's in their area. Double team on Monroe. Kind of a spread 2-3 at that. Porciani flies in over Abdelabi. A shot. 10 for Porciani and a three-point lead. And to be able to spread a zone like that, even a matchup, and penetrate is a no-no as far as Duke's concerned. Leitner knew he was going to miss that shot. He ran in to try to follow it. Can't get it. Monroe has 10 rebounds. Stake so far, able to penetrate. Duke not able to keep them from penetrating. Then on the other end, they block out. Rodney Monroe lost it on the other end. Back comes Duke. Henderson pulls up. Whoa, Fagan's got way up there. Fagan's did a nice job of blocking Leitner out. Leitner getting his hand on it, though, as Fagan's was admiring his work. Gianni working on Bobby Hurley. <laughs> so Gugliano will go to the free throw line. Slater picks up his third. We're getting down to crunch time here. 155 to play. Tom Gugliotta. Again, focus on who gives up the second chance opportunities. Focus on who allows the offensive players, particularly the guards, to penetrate and dish. Those are the things that are very important in crunch time and close game situations. Force the other guy to shoot the low percentage shot. That's what Porciani will try to do. There's a switch off. Leitner lobs underneath. Abdelnabi made a nice catch on the ball, and he's fouled by Figgins. who's already had a career night, has the opportunity to add to it. And let me add, he's shooting 77% <laughs> from the free throw. Yeah, if Allah heard that, he'd probably call you on Monday. <laughs> Was your first mistake, right? And a fine print. Beggins picks up his fourth foul, and Abu Dhabi with 30 points is seven of nine to make it eight of ten from the free throw line. Well, eight of eleven. Okay, I'll get it straight. Abu Dhabi came in averaging 14 points per ball game. He is more than doubled that tonight. Mickey Hinnett, who has really been a spark for North Carolina State, especially this half, has 15 points, and he checks back into the lineup, and Feggins will come out. Well, here's your game. A minute and a half to play, and North Carolina State for the one-point lead. Now the team has any problems with the times out. Duke was two, and she stayed with three. Hinnett gets involved in a hurry, but he missed the shot. Touched by Hurley. It'll be NC State again with a fresh 45 and 119 to go. That's the key word again. Second chance opportunity. Duke down one. They've got to seal off that board and get possession. Rodney Monroe. Probably the guy that State would love to see take the shot, but he'd like to take a good one. We're down to one minute. Now remaining in the ball game, and North Carolina State with a one-point lead and 25 seconds on the shot clock. It's a game clock in the corner of your screen. You see at the top of your screen, Jim Valvano telling everybody to spread out. They're going to run it down to about maybe 12-10. Get it in the hands of Rodney Monroe, or now Mickey Hinnon, who's developed a hot hand. Here's Monroe, and it blocked by Hill. Davis pulls it down. They got it in the guy's hands they wanted, but they weren't expecting Thomas Hill to block the shot. Jim Valvano all the way out of the court as if to say, where's the foul call? And we've got 33 seconds to go. North Carolina State by one, but Duke will have a chance this next trip down court. Gillette announces a razor that can sense the individual needs of your face. Gillette, the best of 
Introducing the extraordinary Gillette Sensor Shaving System. Sensor blades are mounted on responsive springs to continuously sense and adjust to your face for the best shave a man can get. Closer, smoother, safer. New Gillette Sensor. Gillette, the best. sedan doesn't compromise performance for comfort or a luxury feel for raw power. If you've got some time, come over and test drive one. ACC Basketball has been brought to you by Pepsi, Food Lion, and by First Union National Bank. Wouldn't you love to be in the Duke huddle? 33 seconds to go. Third rank Blue Devils down a point to North Carolina State, and they've got the ball. Brad Nessler and Len Elmore with you at Reynolds Coliseum. All right, Coach Elmore, what do you do with that 33 seconds? Well, being uh, an old school player, there's always <laughs> been the old adage among coaches, you'd rather be down one with the ball for the last second shot than up one without the ball. And I have to feel that Duke is going to try their best to hold on to it, run it down, and get the last opportunity, the last possession, unless they get a wide open lane to the basket, or unless one of their big guys is in deep enough and he can draw a three point play. But I seriously think they're going to hold it, they're holding to one. Each team with their five starters on the floor as we work under a half minute. Here's the ball game. Last time they played, they went to overtime, and Duke won at home. State trying to hang on here to a one point lead. with 20 turnovers and that one might cost him the ball game well Mike Krzyzewski quickly tries to add some people Hill and Davis two excellent defenders a little bit of damage control right now they're going to want to pressure NC State State with two timeouts they have an opportunity to call and that's what Brian Howard's going to do good choice he just couldn't find the opening to get the inbounds pass and wisely takes the timeout so Jim Valvano will circle his troops and come up with a an inbound play and on the other side Mike Krzyzewski Lincoln defense is Leitner tried to throw the pass down deep and Duke with another turnover and we'll get another look at it. Well we mentioned that they wanted to hold on to the ball as the last possession but if they got someone in deep enough like Robert Bricky was right there for the three point play they were going to explore it but Leitner had a bad angle it's very difficult to feed that part of the post from the top of the key when I talked about a 45 degree angle that's what you want when you're feeding down low on the block because then you're forcing the defender to play directly in front of you or behind you because if he plays on either side you as an offensive player can use your body to shield him and receive the ball as a timeouts left plus when Bricky made that sweeping move across the lane what Leitner sees is Brickley Bricky coming over what he can't anticipate is Ricky put the brakes on to post up with Monroe and when he did the ball off his left hand and out of bounds. So 17 seconds to go. Duke will have Hill Davis Henderson Hurley and Bricky on the floor. NC State with Monroe Corciani Howard Hinnant and Gugliotta. And one of the biggest problems State has had throughout this game is poor execution not setting picks for each other. That's what you need to do to be successful. Monroe with a nice one there. Monroe is fouled by Hurley and so an 81 percent free throw shooter will be going to the free throw line with 15 seconds left. But don't forget even if Monroe hits both Duke could tie with a three pointer. Mike Krzyzewski again taking out Davidson Hill putting in Leitner and Abdelnabi not only for the rebound a possible rebound but for some offense and offensive rebounding down on the other end. McCaffrey checks in he is a three point shooter. D'Amico in for North Carolina State. 
Rodney Monroe is five out of six from the line tonight. We told you at the beginning of the game, they call Corciani and Monroe fire and ice. Here's ice. Let's see what's running through his veins with 15 seconds to go. Jim Valvano signal Chris Corciani if Rodney makes this and to call a timeout to set their defense. But you wanted to know what's running through his veins right now, I'll tell you. <laughs> Two big ones for Rodney Monroe. And it's NC State by four. Duke needs a three-pointer to tie it. As we have a timeout. 12,400 going crazy. They've been playing hoops in this building for 40 years, and North Carolina State has won 80% of the games played here. <laughs> Remaining schedule now coming up for North Carolina State. They'll be at Virginia. That's not an easy place to play. Maryland isn't easy this year either now. And then Wake Forest, their season finale before the ACC tournament. For Duke, they've got Arizona from the Pac-10, then at Little John Coliseum. Nobody's been able to beat Clemson there. And then the big rivalry with North Carolina to wrap things up in Durham for their last game. The Blue Devils are 22 and 4. They're trying to stay atop the ACC. They'd go to 10 and 2 if they can pull out a win tonight. As we take a look at the standings, you're going to see Clemson with a win tonight has inched closer to the top. Now Duke loses this one. There's only a game difference in the win column between the Blue Devils and the Tigers. And North Carolina State jockeying for position. They can move into a tie with the Tar Heels for fourth. And of course the positioning is so important because the ACC tournament now is just over two weeks away. Rodney Monroe, who just hit two big free throws, set to play defense. Duke needs a three. Here comes Bobby Hurley. Forced it. Leitner got it. Can't get it. Monroe, the rebound. State's going to win it. put it back in if he missed it. Isn't it something that we talked about Rodney Monroe had only three points for Jim Valvano at halftime. If he hits this, he's on his season average. That's the kind of second half this young man's had. And it all started when we had that close-up of his face. He had, that, he had that look in his eye. Cool as they come. He's going to win it for NC State tonight. Whoever plays this game at home between these two teams normally wins it. That's the story again tonight. NC State with a five-point upset win over the number three-ranked Duke Blue Devils. Final score, 76-71 NC State. Well, there's the scene on the floor tonight. As North Carolina State has upset the Duke Blue Devils. 76-71, you'd have thought they won the NCAA title. Let's take a look at our Holly Farms, players of the game. And what a game it was for Ala Abdel a career high, 32 points to go with his nine rebounds. But how about Rodney Monroe? 19 points in the second half to go with his 11 rebounds. His four free throws in the waning 15 seconds iced it tonight. 
So ice did it. Fire and ice. Rodney Monroe, nice performance, Lenny. Well, Rodney Monroe, cream rises to the top, but you got to give an assist to the guys off the bench for NC State. Mickey Hennett, Brian Feggins, and the other guys who did a nice job in getting them where they are. For Len Elmore, I'm Brad Nessler. You've been watching exclusive coverage of ACC basketball on Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports.